We're at IBC 2018 at Isotope. I'm with Rich and we're going to take a closer look at three features that are, well, basically witchcraft and wizardry in the audio world. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Red Shark at IVC 2018 is brought to you by... Hitchcocks! Hitchcocks! Adobe! Black Magic Design. Okay, so Rich, take me through... Uh, you've basically got three examples of new features that you're releasing. Absolutely, yeah. Right. So three key features for RX-7. Um, one which has been asked for for quite some time for the, the pro, post pro users, um, multi-channel support. So we now support up to 10 channels. So for example, Dolby Atmos 712 formats. We have a file that we have open here, which is actually a 5.1 file, which you can now open within the RX editor. And you can see your individual channels there. So we have our left and right, center, sub, left surround, right surround channels. Um, editing across the channels works in a similar way to how we used to handle mono and stereo or stereo, stereo files. Um, what's interesting, so you can make your selection within any one of the channels there and edit those. Um, now, at the moment we can see each channel discreetly shown in the spectrogram. You can also, using this icon up at the top here, create a kind of summation spectrogram of all of the channels within the, uh, the file. So we're now looking at the resultant spectrogram of left, center, right, surround, left, surround, right, sub. Uh, if I just come back out of there, um, what we can also do, if I just hold down command here and click on the center channel, I can then deselect a specific channel or any number of channels. And then when we go back into the summation view, I can actually see the resultant spectrogram minus the center channel in this case. Why would you need that? Um, it may be that there's um, audio, like in this particular example, um, we have a scene from a movie. Uh, I'll just come back out of the summation view here. So we have a scene in a movie where there is quite a lot of um, noise from crickets in the background. So I'm just going to select a point here and play that. Now you can actually see the cricket noise in the, in the spectrogram there. Now, what you'll also notice, though, is although it's present in the surrounds and in the left and right front speakers, or the channel, sorry, we don't actually have any in the center channel there. So in this instance, I can perform any kind of spectral editing without including the center channel. So I'm only actually editing the channels that actually need cleanup. Yeah. So if we go back to the resultant waveform, I'm going to go into the frequency tool here and just select the band where my crickets are. Oh drag that out a bit more. And I'm going to use Spectral Repair, which is a tool we've had in, in uh, RX now, uh, which most people are familiar with. It's a great tool for being able to repair any issues that you may have within your audio file. Um, I'm going to set it up with a vertical direction of interpolation because it's a frequency-based sound across yes. the entire file. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to attenuate that. So I've got a couple of settings here that will just reduce the level of the crickets in comparison to the rest of the file. I'll hit Render. So it'll take a few seconds to run through that um, because it's rendering a whole file. So the longer the file, the longer it'll take to actually render that. As soon as it's ready, we'll be able to give that an A-B comparison. And actually, if we switch back to the individual channel view, you'll actually then see that on all the resultant channels as it's suddenly taken out of the file. So there you go, it's now disappeared from within the marching line of ants there. And if we deselect there, Let's just go back to the initial state so that we can hear that. So we have the crickets, as you can hear in the background, with the initial state, now with our spectral repair. And we've done that across the whole 5.1 mix. So um, two of the other features that we've got to show, um, one of which is a huge time saver for anybody who is really on a tight time schedule, which a lot of our customers are. We don't have an awful lot of time to turn these things around. Um, and in, in other cases as well, you might get certain people that are less familiar with the options and the functions and features. And so they want to have something that perhaps takes some of the guesswork out of how they approach the repair of a signal or a file. So if we go over to this uh, other uh, file that we have here. So I'll just get rid of the spectral repair. And if I hit play now on this particular uh, file, this is something I've also learned in the software world. So this um, is a recording of a guy, like um, the, and as you can hear from the audio, music. there's some clicks, 
actually what's not audible here because of the background noise in the in the hall here is this hum that's running across the background as well. Now there are a few issues with this file that we would normally have to use multiple processes to, to get rid of. So with Repair Assistant now we have this as the name suggests this this function that steps in and says hey how can I help you it listens to the audio and then it will provide three options as to how we can actually repair that 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 audio file now the first thing you do when you open up the repair assistant is you tell it what type of material you want to yeah. like clean up yeah in this case it's spoken word it's dialogue so we've already got that selected we hit the start analysis button and it's now running through and detecting things like clipping clips clicks hums and any other noise and it then creates a pool of the modules that we have available and creates a uh, processing chain with three different options, as I say. So once that's done the analysis, it brings up this window. We can see a little proxy of the spectrogram. So uh, yeah, another new feature that we've added, which is a huge time saver for the guys that are working in the professional environment where they're on a really short turnaround, which a lot of guys are. Um, you know, with noise or, or um, repairing of audio, it can sometimes be quite a labor intensive thing where you have to try a few different things to find the best solution. Um, so we've tried to take some of the guesswork out of that by creating Repair Assistant. And it's also useful because there's a large number of users out there that know they need RX to repair stuff, but uh, are sometimes maybe a little bit confused by some of the modules that are available. Yeah. So for the non-technical guys or the less experienced guys, it's actually like quite a, a, a good way of helping them to understand the ways in which to use RX as well. But as I say, mainly it's a huge time saver for the short form guys. So um, I have a file here, which is a, a guy um, being interviewed and there's some clicks and pops Very in the background. Juvenile. And this is something I've also learned in the software world. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the speakers here aren't, aren't necessarily able to re reproduce this hum that we have that's visible in the spectrogram there, but obviously you can see it there. Yeah. This is another issue with the file. So um, we have multiple issues we know we need to fix. We open up the repair assistant, and this then says, well, what's the type of material? Is it dialogue, is it music, or is it a combination of dialogue and music? Uh, and in which case, you can hit the start analysis button. It then listens to the file and it will then analyze it for clipping, clicks, hums, and all other noise. And then, based on what it detects, it then comes back with three options as to how you could treat this. And that will be, a, a, it's not just an individual module, it's a signal, or it's a processing chain. So we can see now that it's go, giving us a picture that shows our original, plus a proxy of the spectrogram of the repaired file. So you can see actually all of the options of successfully removed the hum. Um, and now, as we hover over the, the icon with the cursor, it will tell us what processing modules it's introduced for that option. So in option A, we have mouth de-click, de-harmonize, dialogue isolate. Uh, on processing chain B, we have de-click, de-hum, voice de-noise and gain. And on the final one, we have mouth de-click, de-hum and spectral noise. Now, those are not specific to each of the options. Those will be, they, they will change depending on the audio that you play into it. So it's entirely based on what the system detects. And it will then come up with a unique signal chain or processing chain to repair that. Um, so in this case, we can listen to the original. Very juvenile. And this is something I'm very And then juvenile. we can very and quickly and easily very switch very between the options that the repair assistors put forward to us. When we decide upon the option that's best, just down here, there's this little mixer icon which allows you to then do a quick render for the means of comparison, different strengths of processing or different intensities of processing. So now we can very say, juvenile. do we and want it to be a very light intensity, yeah. moderate uh, or heavy intensity, right. which uh, obviously now you can hear as we go through. Um, what's also interesting as well is that when you click on the option, you can open up the module chain and you can actually see what it's suggested and even more than that, you can see the individual settings that it's now created for each of those processes. So uh, yeah, huge time saver, really, really huge time saver. Yeah, and, and going from here to adjusting that and making it just right, making little tweaks is obviously a lot easier than figuring out that yourself. Totally. As, and especially in like, if you do like combinations of, of, of uh, fixes, you yep. never know what affects what. Yeah. So this is a very quick way of, of actually uh, figuring that out and, and solving it. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and as I say, you know, even if you've got lots of time in the mix and you, you can still use this to get you to a decent starting point exactly. and save yourself some time and effort. Yeah. So yeah, it's a great feature.
Uh, now lastly, um, and there are many other features in RX7, we just wanted to cover some key ones here. Um, we've also introduced a new uh, module called Dialog D Reverb. Now, previously we've had D Reverb, but we've now um, trained the D Reverb algorithm specifically for Dialog. And this is all based on a lot of uh, the work that we've been doing with machine learning and artificial intelligence. So it's like the latest iteration of our machine learning based modules. Um, so in this case, we have a... It seemed to very, me, at least just by way of speculation. A very rever reverberant file. Uh, if we go over here to the dialog D reverb, um, we can then, obviously we have the reduction. So we're actually controlling the amount of, of dB reduction that's applied to the reverb trail or tail. Um, we can adjust the sensitivity. So if you, if you make it more sensitive, um, it will get finer and finer clarity on the vocal or the, the spoken word itself. Um, what's also interesting is we have this am, uh, ambience preservation control, which we've also introduced into Dialog Isolate, which allows you to maintain some of the static audio that's running in the background. So that doesn't feel too cleaned up or something. Exactly. Yes. So you can remove the, re the uh, reverb, but still retain some of the other kind of ambience of the recording. Um, so we can just give that a quick it preview It seemed to now. me, at least just by way of speculation, that this must have been designed by... Oh, so it's taken a couple of seconds to pick up on the preview because as you can imagine this is quite a processor intensive uh, um, process. It seemed to me, at least just by way of speculation, that so this must have been designed with the reduction. by people have a... I'll just play that through again. It seemed to me, bypass. at least just by way of speculation, that this must have been designed by people who have a... So you can hear it's actually reducing a huge amount of the reverb it there. It seemed to me, at least just by... So yeah, as I say, this is another one of the uh, processes or modules that we've applied to RX7 that's based on our machine learning, uh, which we've been investing a lot of time and effort into. So um, yeah, so those are the three kind of key features that we wanted to introduce to you guys. Um, hope it's all made sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. If you don't want to miss anything from IBC 2018, then make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Come on, hit that button.